Hello. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. It's Yay. so good to see you. It's good to see you too. You know, it's been a while. Yeah, are virtually live. anyways. <laughs> yes, yes, we are live and recording. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about coronavirus. But before we do, I wanted to share some exciting news and then otherwise bleak day. So I don't know if you saw my my baby Yoda came in. So it's brightening my day. Nice. I have to have these little little fun things in a midst of all this madness. Yeah, I have my my dog comes and sits next to me. Oh, see, that's company. my pet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's my pet. There's the occasional kid pop in, but other than that, it's uh, it's it's that. So this is our first, I think, podcast slash full length video, right? We've done it our is. videos, but this is our our first one. And um, you know, you had a great idea of getting together and talking a little bit about uh, coronavirus and not the not the legal things, but some of the the things that you've been doing that we've been doing and that um, wanted to share some of the things. So you go ahead and start. You had some, you've done some really cool things. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that um, you mo like most companies, employees are now working remote, right. For the most part, as much as they can be, if they're not essential. And that's great. I worry about making sure that those people are taken care of. I'm an extrovert myself. And so which we've talked about in our podcast a lot, which means that I really get my energy and I get my nurture by connecting and talking to people. And actually in, in my day, normally I'm not sitting down, I'm walking around and talking to people and moving and all of that stuff. And I don't get that. And I don't get that said. Um, so it's exhausting. And I know that for a lot of people that, you know, I always joked before, I could work from home for a day mm -hmm. and then I need like you've to said go that. back yeah. in. And, yeah. You've yeah. always said that. Yep. <laughs> so this is a real test. And I, and I think about, you know, my own experience and I have two children at home, one that is doing remote learning and one that's younger that I'm trying to entertain. I do worry about all of the people that are working from home that are dealing with either similar or maybe very different circumstances with spouses getting laid off or, um, you know, just dealing with everything people have to deal with, um, with working remote. So we've been talking a lot about making sure that managers are checking in with people and not just having a meeting, but doing a check-in of like, right. how are you today? How are you feeling? How are you hanging in there? Um, and I think that's really worked out. That's worked out really well. It's very You've basic. You've done some cool things. You've done some really cool things. Um, so, uh, yeah, one of the other executives that is a, also a mom, um, she has four children in the house, so I don't know how she does it. Um, I've got two, and that's enough. <laughs> um, she and I put together a card to send to other working parents just to say, it's okay. You know, we know, we know the struggle. We're all living the struggle. This is not normal. This isn't work from home. Don't beat yourself up. There's kind of right. no such thing as parenting and that's really opened the door for people to come to us and say thank you so much I've been so stressed and so bogged down where they wouldn't have raised their hand right. in the past um and another neat thing too is we've set out uh care packages which I think has been just a, a touch point for people to feel like you know that they they care I mean I've seen studies where people feel like they have to work harder in a remote environment to be seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, it, and it's such a different, it's different now because there are many companies that were forced to, right? So that were forced to send mm -hmm. people remote. And I think for us, we've had a lot of people who were maybe not working from home, but were, you know, remote because we have a lot of people on the road. Some people, certainly our salespeople were largely working from home or in the branch, or we had people that would bounce from uh, customer location to customer location. So it's, it's been a shifting of that. But we also have a, a good portion of our corporate office working remotely now, which is new. Um, and because we had the technology in place, we were able to do that really, really quickly and our IT, IT team was terrific at doing that. But um, 
it's that's been a change for us. I think it was a ch- more of a challenge. Our managers were great. Our managers were great. I think it was more of a challenge for some of our people who weren't used to working from home and and really had to mm-hmm. adjust. And maybe that wasn't their first choice, but um, it was the best choice and the safest choice for everyone because a lot of our people can't. So a lot of our people, right. uh, we have we have forty five locations. They have to be at work every day and every location looks a little different. Some are closed and you have to call and have curbside delivery. Some are, uh, well, none are closed. Some are closed, the doors are locked and you have to have curbside. Some customers come in, so it looks a little bit different. So for us, it was trying to balance the needs of our our folks who are still dealing with customers every day and our our folks who are working from home and and not forgetting either group, but also being sensitive to our our folks on the front lines that um, they can't work from home. So that's been that's been a struggle for us, I think, in the HR team. That um, how do we balance both? Right? And I think our our solution to that has been being hyper available to everybody. And a lot mm-hmm. of like we do we use a personal touch with with everything. So checking in, checking up, um, really making sure our managers have what they need, making sure our people have what they need, and uh, we divided up our HR team with states and had experts in each area. And so that really, um, really helped quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I think continuous communication is important. Having that critical, you know, touch point is, is really critical. The other thing that I've learned to this is this, this, um, is kind of ripe for burnout. And so Mm -hmm. people that have to work are dealing with staying safe, right? And all of the emotional concerns that come with that. And then people that are working from home have to deal with other things of like, I get up, I don't commute anymore. I get on my computer, grab a cup of coffee, sit down and work. And they're working till whenever at night, you know? And so I think it's also really important to help as leaders to help them create those boundaries of like, this is work time and this is personal time or wellness time or, or family time whatever your personal kind of situation is. Yeah, I mean, I know personally, I, I developed somewhat of a routine. So that was important to mm-hmm. me that, okay, get up, get coffee. I always exercise. I try to do at least a couple of short walks during the day. And I try to do something that works for me. So it feels not like I'm going to the office because it doesn't, but it feels there's a little bit of structure and it's a little bit of normalcy in this such a weird time. Um, so mm-hmm. that's helped me personally because I definitely, the burnout you mentioned, I definitely felt that in the beginning because as this was hitting, we were all, all of us in HR and, and lots of others were just trying to wrap our heads around everything from laws to making sure our people are okay to running our business mm-hmm. and, and a lot of companies declining business. And it was just, crazy so it was really a 24 7 type of thing and that's when I started to feel it I remember the first um the first week it was all going on I did meditation for the first time ever and the only time so far but <laughs> I'll return but yeah, I just had I needed something to calm my brain and then um I figured it out and figured out what worked and um figured out what didn't and and tried to that exercise was key in the walking was really key, Mm -hmm. but even we're not immune. So we're too busy. I think a lot of times trying to take care of other people that sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. Right. Right. Or you're just moving so fast that you're just like, I gotta get this. I gotta get this. I gotta get this. done, And you forget about, I think it was eye opening for me. I was on Facebook one night and one of my former coworkers who he and his wife both work full time. um, And they have three kids. So they're both home with three kids trying to manage it. And I'm feeling the stress of trying to manage it, but you know, his spin on it was, I'm so stressed. I'm stressed about everything. I'm worried about my job. I'm worried about my kids. I'm worried about like what's going to happen. I'm worried about not knowing all of these things. And so that's one of the things that concerns me because if if you met this person, you'd say, wow, they're, they've got it all together, right? They don't seem like that kind of person that would have to deal with anxiety or other issues. Um, but I think there's, there's so many unknowns right now that I think people do worry about, you know, what, what is the next six months going to bring? Um, yeah. 
in that. And yeah. so we've tried to roll out a lot around mental wellness and mental mm-hmm. health um, and, try, and are trying to get people moving. So we use a wellness app um, and we, tr- we were going to do a walking challenge, but we have a location in California and they can't go outside during specific hours. I don't understand <laughs> that. So, wow. um, so we ended up doing a stretching challenge. So at least people are getting out and moving. Yep. It's so easy to sit in your spot all day and do video calls. Um, but we've also really relied on, um, information from our employees assistance program and sent Mm -hmm. that out. And we have a, um, which I don't think people think about all that often. And I may have mentioned it on a previous podcast. We have a doctor on demand or a virtual doctor program through our medical, and you can use that for mental health. And so, I mean, you think about it, calling in for the common cold or, you know, sinus infection or whatever. But you can also call in and talk to a mental health professional, which I think is fantastic. And I think people yeah. forget about forget about that. So there's, I think there's a lot of good options. Especially now, I mean, who wants to go into an office? Our, our uh, girls had their annual checkup with uh, remotely the other day this week. So, yeah, we're going to do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it actually was pretty, it was pretty cool. And um, having, this is a tough time for everyone and people who have, um, excuse me, who struggle with mental health issues, it's even tougher. And so we've done similar things. We've really tried to push the EAP. We've tried to, um, you know, like I said, be hyper available. And to your point about communication, our CEO sends out a, a, a video message several times a week and an email at least every day and updating on what's going on and a different topic and a couple of times is focused on mental health and um and our hr team next week is gearing up to uh, really dive even deeper and what else can we do and how can we help and how can we do more for our remote folks and how can we do more for the folks in line and i think like you said with your friend the tough part is you don't you don't know you don't you we have no idea yeah, no idea. And that know. uncertainty is, is awful. And there's only so much we can do, but what we can do is a lot and anything we can do is helpful. So as employers, we're, we're trying to do that and, and be available and do what we need to do. And, and what that looks like now, I think looks a lot different than it did even, you know, a month and a half ago. And, and right. You know, I know our HR team, I've talked about this before, has sent out toilet paper to our locations when they couldn't find it. And we, I think we have our HR assistant is spending probably half her time sourcing masks some days and um, just doing things that you never thought would be part of what you do. But it's the most important thing we can do right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think finding those touch points too, as you mentioned earlier, I think is really important. And some, some of the teams that I've worked with, they um, are doing virtual lunches or virtual walks or yeah. virtual happy hours, which is kind of fun. So there might, we also, I think, have to find a way to make sure that we are still having fun because when you're in the office, right. you're having those conversations with somebody next to you or somebody at the water cooler in the kitchen, and those have completely disappeared. So some right. of the people you would normally interact with, you're just not seeing anymore. And so having that opportunity to just relax and have fun and joke together again, like you're in the office, I think you're really important. Right. And I think, I think you inspired me to do something, but we get together with our HR team by video every day. And we get together with our, mm-hmm. our virus response team gets together every day. Our full leadership team gets together once a week on video. But I think, and I talk with people a lot, but I think I want to have more video chats. I think that that's, like you said, you normally you'd run into this person or that person and you just don't do that now. You have to actively do that. And so I think seeing someone is, is different than talking to someone on the phone, uh, especially I'm a more visual person. And I think that that, that's something I'm going to try to do more of um, because you never know. And I think I always said, I always talk about this. One of my favorite things is going out to visit our locations and it, I can't do that now. Um, So I'm trying to do that virtually and our whole team's trying to do that virtually. And there's also no replacement for being in front of people. But if you can talk to someone, especially talk to somebody over video, you might find things out that you wouldn't otherwise. If you're checking in on someone, they might not pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm struggling. Um, But they might do that if you reach out. So 
that's mm-hmm. something I want to try to do more of. And I've tried to do it with, with friends and, and HR colleagues because we're all just running around crazy right now, but um, I can definitely mm-hmm. do more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really, Good. yeah, I can definitely do more, but I think it's, it's a time that will pass and, and we'll get through it. We just don't know when, and that's the right. challenging thing. Right. And I know the things that have kept me going are, are the kind of company that I work for and making decisions and even tough decisions in the right way and being super transparent has really helped. And my HR community and my friends like you have really helped mm-hmm. and, and, um, my husband and I haven't killed each other yet, which is somewhat <laughs> remarkable. We haven't even fought. Um, so that's, that's been great. And uh, you never know. Like I thought this would be really challenging for me because I love traveling and I love being out and about and it's been better than I thought though. It's, it's still, it's still mm-hmm. a challenge, but um, you know, we'll all get through it together. Right. I think that's the the message to other HR professionals that I want to get out there is that there's no perfect answer. And this is, we're all navigating in this sea of uncertainty and we've never been here before. And so, you know, don't beat yourself up and learn, right? So you've, right. you've built a really good routine. It took me a couple of weeks to get into a group yeah. and to build a routine. I think I'm there, but I think back about, okay, what didn't go well and how do I fix that? And one of my colleagues, actually, she, she and I were talking about how do you manage the kids during the day? Yeah. And she turned a drawer in her kitchen, like a lower level drawer into a snack drawer. I was like, that's great. Oh, that's so brilliant. The kids can self-serve. Right. So yeah. I did that. And, um, and, and that's really helped out a lot. It seems like a small thing, but I think just talking to people and getting ideas and sharing ideas will help you feel like, okay, I'm not in this struggle right. alone right we're all we're all, we're in all this together through it and yeah. everybody's got you know everyone but a lot of people have kids at home or pets that pop into videos and you just have to things won't look perfect and and people are <laughs> everybody needs a haircut if you, <laughs> everyone needs a haircut and and uh it just it looks a little different i want to mention there's lots of cool resources out there but one of my favorites has been uh, lars schmidt posted this public coronavirus document. I know we've talked about it before that has all kinds of resources. And um, that's something I'll, we'll try to post through our social media channels and um, that it's, it has lots of great resources, including resources for working from home with kids and things that you can do with kids, which is, is pretty neat. And it's a public Google doc mm-hmm. that you can just go on and add to, or you can um, take the information from it's, it's neat. And that's, I think one of the, the best things and out of any kind of horrible situation, good things come out. You know, one of them has been, we paused and spent more time with families. And I think that's, that's Mm -hmm. really, um, we hopefully took some time for ourselves, but also we, we connected with people in a different way and we shared information in a way that, you know, we really never have in the past because nobody knows, like you said, nobody knows what they're doing. So sharing that information has been, I know, absolutely invaluable to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those, that's a great resource. Um, Sherm has put together some really good resources too, and it's right on their homepage. I think that's been a great help for me on building policies and communication. Um, And then our rebel group, when we talk Mm -hmm. about it, our our HR rebels has been such a huge help. Incredible. I think we're, yeah, we meet once a week and just talk about and hash out the things that we've been doing or the, the yeah. questions we might have. And every week I learn something new on that call. And, and in the beginning stages, I think that group was so helpful in like, what do you have? Like, right. what are you sharing right. with your employees right. and your team? And what can I feel? And what can I borrow? And here's what we're doing. Right. And right. I think if you can get that kind of community, um, it's hugely valuable. I think yeah, we talk absolutely. about that on all of our podcasts, all, I think, all lot. but I, it's, uh, it's become even more important now so that you don't feel, I think we all feel like we're a little bit on an island because we're walking in this unknown territory, but it helps right. you feel less like an island by yourself. Yep. Yep. The community is, is, you know, HR community is always important, but never more so than now, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. 
Well, I think we're just about at our 20 minutes or so. That's I know about it. Time. So Time. it was great to see you. We've got to do it, it again. Good to and see hopefully you too. One of the next ones can be live and in person and not. And virtual. that will be nice. We may have masks or we may look a little different and we'll probably need haircuts, but hopefully we can uh, we can do that soon. So it's good to see you. Bye, everybody. Good to see you. Bye. Stay well, everyone. Bye.